Good morning. I would be Good your mom. Morning. Morning. Good morning. I will be your moderator for today, May the 10th, Wednesday. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest hearted true seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and is not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and uh, scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. This school was incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and the original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will show proof that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letter or character in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there letter J in the English alphabet until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus, and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and correct name of the Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no descriptive or shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you how that everything on this chart is within the cloud in like manner, Everything in the universe abides within 
the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahweh and Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preference of a holy name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. Now, after Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now, the pattern consists of a most holy place a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that Absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. We have 10 primary aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition skepticisms and ignorance. Six is to learn, know and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. Nine is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men, whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10th is to inherit eternal life. Now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state, 
I watch where it is peace. And our slogan is to speak the truth. Let us all bow our hearts and mind and thanking Yahweh for allowing us to come here today together in his name to learn about his purpose, his pattern, and his plan. Thanking him for giving us an inkling of knowledge of his grace that he's given us. And Father, we of ourselves cannot give this grace to us. Thank you, Yahshua, for bringing us here and sitting us down and teaching us about you, how you brought this creation in and how you set it in motion and how you're still doing your works in this creation. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to sit down in this school and to learn the truth. It is an individual thing. Thank you for giving us the heart to want to know, to want to continue to know, to want to love you with all our hearts and with all our minds, because that's all we have. We thank you, Yahshua, today. In your precious son, Yahshua, let us all say hallelujah. We have a song. Hallelujah. We have a song by Dr. Lenore Allen and Dr. Lucy Ottman, where we read in Romans the 14th chapter. Could Dr. Lila Morris give us a prayer today? Good morning. I just gave Maybe. the prayer. Could you do a prayer, please? Thank you. May we all bow our hearts and minds. Dear Yahweh, through your son, Yahshua the Messiah, thank you for allowing us to delight in this opportunity to learn more about you Please give us a divine understanding from this divine vision and revelation that we may glorify your name. Please use the vessel's obedience that we may grow in knowledge of you. All praises and glory unto you. Thank you for your many blessings you have bestowed upon us. I pray in the name of Yahshua, our Savior, the only hope to eternal life. May we all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to sing today. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. The heavens ring with the holy name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in his name. The heavens ring with his holy name. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. We've come to teach in the name of Yahshua. Come on, let's preach in the name of Yahshua. We've come to teach in his name. The whole the soul is reached through his holy name. We've come to teach in the name of Yahshua. We've come to hear the true name of Yahshua. Let's give a cheer in the name of Yahshua. We've come to hear his true name. Bring our fair to his holy name. We've come to hear in the name of Yahshua. We've come to see in the name of Yahshua. Spiritually in the name of Yahshua. We've come to see his true name, spiritually his holy name. We've come to see in the name of Yahshua. We've come to rise in the name of Yahshua, filling the skies with the name of Yahshua. We've come to rise in his name, filling the skies with his holy name. 
We've come to rise in the name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. The heavens ring with the holy name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in his name. The heavens ring with his holy name. Yes, we've come to sing in the name of Yahshua, in the name of Yahshua, in the name of Yahshua. <coughs> Good morning. I'll be reading Romans, the 14th chapter from the King James Version of the Bible and inserting the true and correct name. Romans 14. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For Yahweh has received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth, yet he shall be holden up, for Yahweh is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto Yahweh, and he that regardeth not the day to Yahweh he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to Yahweh, for he giveth him thanks. And he that eateth not to Yahweh, he eateth not, and giveth Yahweh thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto Yahweh, and whether we die, we die unto Yahweh. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are Yahweh's. To this end, the Messiah both died and rose and revived, that he might be the ruler of both the dead and living. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of the Messiah. For it is written, as I live, saith Yahweh, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to Yahweh. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to Yahweh. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by Yahshua the Messiah that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Yahshua died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he that in these things serveth the Messiah is acceptable to Yahweh and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. For meat destroyeth not the work of Yahweh. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before Yahweh. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That was Romans, the 14th chapter. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We thank everyone for their participation. I would now turn this over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for assembling. I will turn this over to our sister, Dr. Valerie Lewis of Springfield, Ohio. Good morning, Dr. Lewis. Oh, I, I'm sorry, that Valerie, I apologize. Our readers is Shamir Brass and Lenore Allen. No problem. Uh, I have, you know, wanting to get into uh, some things. And I think that uh, we just have to sometimes regroup and you know, we're called the honest hearted truth seekers in Yahshua the Messiah. So let's be the honest hearted truth seekers in Yahshua the Messiah. And um, sometimes I think we bring things in, and I'm not saying any one individual, I'm saying all of us bring in things from uh, the past. Um, and we want to make sure that you understand this is a divine vision and revelation directly from Yahweh himself to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in 1931. And that was a big task, especially at that time. And we are here to carry on this teaching and to keep it the way that it was given to him from Yahweh. So it's not part of, you know, so-and-so or me, I think this and I think that. And I think, you know, let's keep it straight. And we did have uh, some trustees that did keep it straight. And then there's other ones that didn't. And that we know the difference. And that's one of the gifts of the spirit is to discern, you know, and avoid being deceived, like one of our aims says. So the point that I just wanted to make um, it was brought up yesterday about judgment and stuff. And the thing is, where do we get our witnesses from? And where, what are we teaching? We're not teaching, you know, part of Christianity, part of Roman Catholicism, part of this, part of that, part of my idea, part of your idea. But we're teaching the vision of revelation. And we've been entrusted with that, whether you're a speaker or a, a moderator or reader whatever it's not about you it's about yashua the messiah and the truth so the thing is it's like people think oh we shouldn't judge that is a christian concept that comes in and i'm just you know talking straight you know so the thing is it's like we have to discern between what we think and what the teaching is teaching us so um, you know, and Romans 14 is talking about that quite a bit, uh, as far as judging and, you know, discerning and so on and so forth. And I just want to, uh, you know, I know that some people are, you know, been around for a long time and some people haven't been around for a long time, but the way that we operate in these classes, the way it was set up is that you go to the law, prophets, fulfillment, spirit fulfillment and before i came into this teaching i didn't know anything about law prophets and fulfillment and, you know i mean i was told a lot of different things in my religious upbringing that i tried to embrace but i really didn't understand and when i came into this teaching it's like wow i have to you know set aside the things that i was taught as a, a, a small person and it's like they have to believe, you know, see what the vision and revelation at the end of the ages. And it's not the first time when Noah was talking, he preached 120 years, right? And uh, he didn't change his story, you know, and it's like there, the imagination of man's heart was only evil continually. That's Genesis, the uh, fifth chapter. So it's like, these things have happened in the past and we got to pay attention to what Yahweh is showing us, not what we think is right or wrong, what Yahweh is showing all the way down. 
And it seems like as we get closer and closer to an end of an age, there's going to be problems. There's going to be situations we have to deal with. But it's, it's, you know, if we have trust and faith in Yahshua, you know, Noah didn't just, you know, collapse and change his story because he got it directly from Yahweh, right? And that was in Genesis, you know, the imagination of man's heart was only evil continually. And it's like, then you see with Moses, you know, he came down when he, re, you know, the Moses chart, when he came down, he received, a, he was one that went up there alone and by himself. And when he came down, what did he say? You know, let, a, you know, make a sanctuary that he, Yahweh made well among us. Okay. And the, the master builders from Egypt said, no, that's not going to stand. But the point is, when Yahweh, re when uh, Moses received something directly from Yahweh Elohim, he's going to go with that. So it's like, the point is, we got to go with what Yahweh Elohim says, not what the master builders of the world say. You know, oh, I think it's this way. I think it's that way. You know, it doesn't, that doesn't come into play in this situation. So it's like their master builders are saying it's not going to stand, but Moses had, you know, and Yahweh actually put the spirit within some of those folks to build it the way that he wanted it done. So it's like when you want the do job done right, you, you do it yourself. You put that spirit within them. So it's like, it's not going to be left up to some man's interpretation is the point. And if somebody comes to you with something, whatever it might be, and they have no witnesses in the law of prophets and how Yahshua fulfilled it or spirit fulfillment, it's, it's, not, it's not worthy of you even thinking about it. That's what you had before. And we don't want to bring that other stuff into this teaching. That's not what we're about here. OK, so it's like we've been given rules and regulations, uh, Isaiah 8 and 20, Romans 1, 19 and 20. And these things are just foundational, uh, you know, things that we need to know so that that's what separates us from the rest of the world. OK, and I know that uh, a lot of worldly people think, oh, you can't judge. and You can't do this. You can't, do, you know. That's not what this teaching teaches. And that's what I just want to, you know, run a line and maybe hopefully uh, uh, get it across so that somebody might understand. Because I, I didn't understand when I first came in. Okay. So Isaiah 8 and 20 says, to the law and to the testimony, if they, they who, they anybody, speak not according to the, uh, the scriptures, there's no light in them. Okay. And, uh, I can see that they're coming up with it on the screen. These are um, scriptures that we want to remember that were brought to our mind, um, you know, from this divine vision and revelation. And it is a divine vision and revelation. And we can run all the way down to about how you can't add to it or take away. And if you do, then you're running into trouble. And, you know, it's not... Uh, the thing is, you, you're, not, you're no better than the Holy Spirit. You can't get it across to any better than the Holy Spirit. He's supposed to be the teacher. If you're teaching the truth, it is the Holy Spirit. If you're not teaching the truth and you're doing something else, that's not the Holy Spirit. Excuse he me. He is the spirit of truth. I'm okay? sorry. I'm, so it's, Isaiah 8 and 20 says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no... Go ahead. Would you mind reading 19 also? Go ahead. For when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their Elohim? For the living should he inquire from the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because mm -hmm. there is no light in them. Okay. And so, you know, don't speak unto, you know, don't seek unto them familiar spirits or those little wizards that peep and mutter. And there's a lot of little wizards out there that peep and mutter and want to tell you things that are appealing to you, you know. And uh, 
one of the things I really like Dr. Kinley talked about in his transcripts that, you know, Satan's got a lot of play pretties. Mm -hmm. And what might be pretty to you is not pretty to me. But the thing is, he's got something for everybody. And the thing is, we don't want to get distracted, especially at this late date. You know, so don't, you know, bite and devour one another like we had let, read the other day. It's like, let us try to understand these things so that we can all, you know, move on and, you know, and appreciate the gifts that Yahweh has, Yahshua has given us, what he died for, you know? So it's like, we're, it's not a competition. It's not a, you know, it's like, we want to understand. We're, we're said that we are saying that we're the honest hearted true seekers, right? So yeah. let's be honest hearted true seekers, you know? And not your truth, but the truth. There is only one way, one truth, one life, you know? So it's like, you know, there's ground rules that are different from what people do in the world in this teaching. This is a divine vision and revelation directly from the creator. So Noah, at the end of the age, he was saying something to them that they were not familiar with. Rain, it never happened before. You know, so it's like, and then Yahshua comes in. Did they follow him? Did they praise him? They put him on the cross when he was 33 years old. Most of, some of us are older than 33, you know? And the thing is, you know, you're going to suffer persecution for the true sake, but make sure it's for the truth's sake. And the thing is, we have to, we have a uh, gifts from the Holy Spirit. And one of them is discerning. And the thing is, we uh, want to make sure that we're discerning correctly. It's like if somebody says something, it's like sometimes people look at who's saying it rather or how they're saying it rather than is it the truth? And that should always be a question in our mind. Is that the truth? You know, when I came down to the teaching, I was like, you know, raised Roman Catholic. I didn't understand these things, you know, but the point is, when I got the name, I realized that this is the, you know, this is what Yahweh says. So it's like, Lord God and Jesus has to go. So when we come into the teaching, there are certain things in our past that have to go. You might think it's good to keep the Sabbath, or you might think it's good to do this or do that. You know, okay. But the point is, that's not this divine vision of revelation. All right. So it's like, and we want to make sure that we just understand each other. And if you run, you know, certain topics are a little bit more um, uncomfortable for people. And uh, the thing is, you know, hearing the truth is going to go against the grain of what you've been taught, no matter what your background is. And just let's see that for what it is. So the thing about judgment that was brought up yesterday um, with Matthew, the seventh chapter, and, um, you know, I'm just going to, um, you know, in th this uh, scripture that we got, it's like talking about judgment and, you know, different things like, you know, what people do as far as eating herbs or, you know, so on and so forth. You know, that's not what we're judging about. That is, I mean, we're, you know, if somebody wants to do that, and if somebody's offended, if I eat uh, a certain thing, then, you know, we take that into account. We don't want to offend anybody mm -hmm. deliberately. But the thing is, we want to tell people the, people the truth. So it's like, you know, back there in the law, we had a, a, a judge and judgment going on. And we had the priest set up. And they had a breastplate of judgment, you know, that's a uh, Exodus 28, 15 and 29. If some if one of the readers could get that for me, please. Okay. Exodus 28, 28, 15 and then 29. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with skillful work. After the work of the ephod, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and a fine twine linen, thou shalt make it. And 29? Mm-hmm. Yes, please. I'm just trying to show you where it is in the book, back here in the law. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel and the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before Yahweh continually. Okay, so he's setting up a, um, a priesthood back there. And that priesthood back there, we're talking about, you know, it's going to be, it's a physical priesthood back there and a physical family and physical, you know, different things that they had to be in order to be a priest. And we know that that old covenant is a type and shadow of the new covenant after Yahshua went through his death, burial, and resurrection, changed everything, the time of reformation. So to me, to, on this side of the cross, there is a priesthood but it doesn't look like the priesthood back there. And we'll get into that. But the thing is, I just want to point out that there has been something set up physically so back here. And now it's going to be translated into the spirit after Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. Okay. So it's like he had the breastplate and she's showing that on the green chart here. And it's like, uh, and, and judges had to hear the cause of the people back there. And it was a physical thing and Moses couldn't handle it all. So it's like in Deuteronomy uh, 1, 16 and 17, just get that. And uh, I've just tried to, you know, run it down a little bit to go back to the things that we need to get for witnesses. It's not what I think. It's not what, you know, so-and-so thinks. It's what thus saith Yahweh. And it's set up back there under the law physically so. But after Yahshua, it's all been translated into the spirit. Deuteronomy 1, 16. Yeah. And I charged your judges at that time saying, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. You shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is to Elohim, and the cause that is not too hard for you, bring it on to me, and I will hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just running this down, so hopefully we can see what judgment is all about. And what, uh, what is judgment all about? What's the difference between judgment and discernment? I'm very vague on that because when you say don't judge and then you're using the information that you're learning from the Bible to call people to whatever you have a disagreement with or whatever, that's not a judgment. I don't think if somebody, if you disagree with somebody, but what's the difference? I, I don't have a book or anything to look it up. The difference between judgment and discernment. That's what we're getting into right now. Okay. We're trying to show you that back there, they were set up judges. They had a breastplate of judgment. There was a priesthood back there. And that was physical or natural for Israel. But it's showing us a spiritual principle on this side of the cross. And that's what we're trying to line up so that we can see it clearly. And not bring in our thoughts or our ideas from the world because the world you know oh don't judge me and you know this and that but it's like this this is is that what yahweh says is that what yashua says that's what we want to discern the difference between decide the difference between see the witnesses for it do you see what i'm saying Okay, so we're just, I'm just setting it up in the law. And there's more scriptures than I'm going to be able to get today because I don't want to take up the whole time. Because, you know, the thing is, Dr. Kinley talks and nobody can do it better than him. Okay, so um, uh, Proverbs, let, let's just let's go to um, Isaiah 11, 1 through 5. Yeah. And, and like it was brought out last, uh, yesterday last year <laughs> yesterday that uh it's very important to understand between the dispensation and ages okay so what was prevalent or what was okay for israel isn't okay for us now 
on this side of the cross, on the other side, after Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection is what I mean. Okay, so it's like it's very important to understand between the dispensation and ages, and sometimes uh, that's what the world has a problem with is they don't. I mean, before I came into class, I didn't know anything about dispensation age, to tell you the truth. And uh, and I always want to tell you the truth. <laughs> and I hope everybody wants to tell you the truth. So the thing is, it's like, I didn't know anything about a dispensation and age, but what was valid with the uh, prior to Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection, after he went through that and poured out the Holy Spirit, that's a different age and a different dispensation. It's a dispensation of grace. It's not the dispensation of the law. So there's a difference. So the thing is, we got to understand the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. Dispensation of grace versus the dispensation of uh, uh, the law. Okay, so that this is what I'm, I hopefully I'm trying to make a little bit clear. Because somebody, you know, we, we got the, um, you know, Matthew 7 and uh, 1 and stuff. But over there in Isaiah, it's talking, you know, I'm just, hopefully can, hopefully you can see it. And there is, there is a difference between what's going on in the old covenant and what's going on in the new covenant. And we don't want people uh, to just you know, get offended and leave or, you know, accuse each other or whatever, you know, goes on. It's like, we want to understand if we're honest hearted truth seekers, we want to understand the truth about this. And this came directly from the creator. It's not from, you know, the church of God or the church of, you know, whatever. This is different than anything you have ever been introduced to. Please read. Okay, um, Dr. Brass, you want to read? And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Should I continue? Yes, please. And the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. Okay, so that's describing that Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him. That's talking about Yahshua. The spirit of wisdom, understanding. And we see it back in the cloud that there's uh, intelligence, knowledge, and wisdom, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And those things are is what's being converted in us. That's what forms our soul. Okay. So the spirit of counsel and might and the spirit of knowledge of, and, and of the fear of Yahweh, the respect of Yahweh, read. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither decide after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. And decide. See, and the thing is, some of us, excuse me, and some of us only know to judge after the sight of our eyes and the hearing of our ears. Mm -hmm. But it's like he's going to judge, but with righteousness, he shall judge the poor. And decide you know? with iniquity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Mm hmm. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his rings. Okay, so and then the you know, I'm just gonna cut it up in Matthew the seventh chapter with that with that we got the other day. It's like none of them had their righteousness to judge, but that's how Yahweh's gonna judge. That's how the Holy Spirit's gonna judge, but with righteousness shall he judge. Okay. So Matthew is talking about judge not that you be not judged. Why? Because none of them were righteous. It was before Yahshua died on the cross, before he poured out the Holy Spirit, before he yeah, resurrected in the hearts and minds of men. You know, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And the thing is, none of them had the Holy Spirit prior to 
the outpouring of the Holy uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Okay, so they didn't have anything to judge with. So we can't bring those things that were under before the cross or before the Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We can't bring that on this side of the cross. Do you see what I'm saying? I hope you do. And um, so if there's a difference, you know. I don't. I really don't. You know, I hear you talking and you're going over here to this one and you're going over that. But what I would like to know is because it's very hard for me to understand and some of you may have already discerned, but what I want to know is how does it apply to us today? I asked the question, what's the difference between judgment and discernment? And if there's any example that, Lucy, that you could convey that will show that very clearly because I'm fogged in my mind right now uh, because the things that happen early on where you're talking about judgment might not be what I can understand in this dispensation as far as judgment and discernment. And so I would like to have an example of that if you could think of anything when you're talking about judgment and discernment and how it applies today. Well, that's what that's what we're getting across. So Matthew, the old, the one thing I want to bring out is like when you read something in the scriptures, wherever you're reading, think about who's he talking to, what dispensation, what age is it in. So it's like people read Matthew seven and say, "Judge not, lest you be judged," you know, and that was before Yahshua made that change. Okay, so they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had nothing to judge with. So after the Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection, which changed everything, that's a, a Romans 9 and 9 or 10, about the time of reformation or the time of change after what Yahshua did. And that changes everything. Okay. So the thing is now, if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you are a true recipient of the Holy Spirit, does that mean you can't judge? No, the Holy Spirit, uh, it, it, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit is judging. Is so the, the Holy, Holy Spirit separate from who we are? Yes, not everybody has the Holy Spirit. Let's make that pretty clear. And if everybody did have the Holy Spirit, this life would, this, the world would not be in the situation that it's in. So are okay. the Holy, is the Holy Spirit the nine attributes or, uh, no, you know, wisdom? Spirit, spirit's attributes. But the wisdom, thing is, you have intelligence. Knowledge, me, intelligence. Excuse me. Excuse me. Is that the oh, Holy Spirit? Uh, that's what I'm trying to find out. What are you? What is the Holy Spirit? Well, let's read what Dr. Kinley says about what the Holy Spirit is. Okay. That's over in, uh, um, let me see if I got it right here. And, and the thing is, it's like people are have the attributes. People are born with a certain amount of intelligence, for instance. People are born with knowledge and understanding and wisdom and beauty and justice and all the attributes. And it has there on the green chart that she just had up, it has the attributes. And then it has the systems of the body and everybody is born with that. But the point is, what are you using your intelligence for? You're, are you creature serving or creator serving? You know, are you getting your intelligence and you want to get a good job and a good home and a good this and a good that? Or are you trying to help other souls that uh, can know, come to know and understand Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists and know what Yahshua did for us to save our souls? Because he came to seek and save those that are lost. Okay. So the point that I'm trying to make is you have those attributes. But what do you use them for? And that's what forms your soul. And this is, um, I think it's a black book. Uh, 
if you have different uh, transcripts and stuff, this is May 9th, 1966, False Prophets and True Gospel. And he talks about, there are two other parts, because you're made up of spirit, soul, and body. And what has to be converted is your soul. There's a conversion of a soul. There's a subversion of a soul. There's a soul that can be lost. There's a soul that can be saved. Not everybody has the Holy Spirit. People have attributes. People have qualities. But what are they using them for? Mm -hmm. So in um, this is on page three of uh, uh, false, prophets. false Prophets and True Gospel, May 9th, 1966. And just listen. And there are two other parts. He's talking about the body, first of all. And we all have a physical body. But the point is, what else? You know, we're not just a, a, a vessel. We're not just a blank thing. There's something going on internally. And that's what's going to cross over into the next age. Physically, you're not going to go there. And we all have an expiration date in our physical body. Right. And I think all of us know that. So your spirit soul and a body and what's going to happen is you're going to get a whole new body your soul and your spirit is what's going to pass over into the next age so it's like and there's two other parts your intellectual capacity and this is what dr skinley saying page three may 9 1966 your intellectual capacity your knowledge and your wisdom and your understanding your disposition, your attitude, your conduct, your behavior, your attributes, your disposition forms your soul. That's what forms your soul. And that's what we come in with, but it has to be converted. We have to be born again. So is soul and Holy Spirit the same thing? Okay. This is no, because I, I asked what was the Holy Spirit, and then you went to soul. I'm tr I'm really earnestly trying to understand, especially when I ask the question, a certain question. That's what I'm asking. I'm not ask. I was not asking about the soul, although they might go hand in hand. But I'm asking, what is the Holy Spirit? Well, <laughs> you know, the thing is, it's like. You're asking questions, but you're not even listening to what's being said. I'm and listening, I understand, but it's not answering no. my question. Well, the, the, you know, this is not really exactly why we're getting into this. We okay. want to know how to follow something. We want to know how to get into something. We All know right. how to want to get into something, not bring some things into the world, but have what this teaching teaches. So it's like, um, you know, we can, you know, ask a lot of questions and maybe somebody else would be better at answering and stuff. But maybe. I'm just trying to show you how the judgment's going on and that that's a, a Christian concept about judge not lest you be judged. The thing is, it's like he's given every man a sufficient amount of intelligence. Okay. And if what you're using it for is to gain something for yourself, that's not the Holy Spirit. If you're using it to help other souls, that's what the Holy Spirit's about. Okay. So the thing is, it's like, in, um, and he talks about how we should all be able to judge if you have been gifted with the Holy Spirit. And I don't want to take up too much more because it's like this time, you know, it's like uh, there's a transcript born of a woman um, in. Uh, that was 66 or 67 that Dr. Kinley. And I would encourage everybody to read the transcripts, read what he said, because he's the one that had the vision of revelation. And if somebody's telling you something, where's their witnesses? What are witnesses? All these things come into play, you know? So the thing is, it's like Dr. Kinley was the man, the only man at the end of the age, okay? And he says, uh, and he's quoting over, this is a man born of a woman. And I just want to read this. This is a transcript from 66. And the thing is about the truth, it doesn't change. 
you know, Yahshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, and the top of page four, it says, dare any of you having a matter against another be taken before the law of the unjust, not before the sons. Why don't you know that the sons shall judge the world? Mm -hmm. Because he shall judge the world. How? By that man that he has ordained. All of you put together constitute the man, that man whom he has ordained, which is the Messiah. The world is being judged. Now, if you are unable to judge the world now at this time, then you won't know if you are saved or lost. You won't know from right from wrong. That individual that is, isn't able to judge the world, that man is lost. And it goes on, and I think I always, you know, encourage people to read the whole transcripts. That was man, man born of a woman. So the thing is, it's like we got to listen to what the scriptures say, what Dr. Kinley said, what the creation is saying, you know, mm -hmm. and you make decisions all the time. So, yes, there you can judge with the Holy Spirit. OK, and uh, the aspect last yesterday was talking about love. And we have an idea of love that we brought in from the world, but it's like also love is uh, uh, the chastisement that we saw yesterday, okay? So it's like the high priest back there had a breastplate of judgment. He had to do some judging all the way down. But now on this side of the cross with the Holy Spirit, you can make a proper judgment. And if you can't, that person's lost is what he said. Let's see, Lenore's got it right up there. Doc, uh, Dr. Valerie. Yes. Uh, may I just uh, add a little something to what you're saying? And perhaps this will be a help. John 14 and 26. Can someone please read that? But the comforter, which the comforter is Yahshua the Messiah, read, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, read, whom the Father will send in my name, the Father Yahweh will send in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, who is the Holy Spirit, read, shall teach you all things all things free and bring all things to your remembrance all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you read peace i leave with you mm -hmm. my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth give i unto you let not your heart be troubled Neither let it be afraid. Keep reading. Read, please, Doc. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. Mm -hmm. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe. Okay, thank you, Doc. I just wanted to point out because the question is, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is Yahshua the Messiah in you, guiding your steps, and is your only hope of glory. And this is necessary to believe. So I hope that that is, uh, gives, shed some light onto your question. And Dr. Valerie, I so appreciate the time that you're taking with this. And I appreciate the time of both Valerie and Dr. Joyce Van Hood. I did get some understanding and that's all I'm looking for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Dr. Lewis? 
Well, the scripture lesson, Romans 14, 17, says the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking. Because mm -hmm. that's what they were taught. He was talking about the judging, how people judge and whatever. Uh, but he said the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then it says, oh, what else did it say there? It says, uh, for those, are, that's the acceptable uh for he that is he that follow he that in these things serveth the messiah is acceptable to yahweh and approved of men so uh it's so you see since the holy spirit's poured out that translates you into the kingdom and that's what causes you to be a righteous judge <laughs> to know what's right and wrong because it's the holy spirit showing you and that and discern me is, is that when it says the seventh thing to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. It really takes the Holy Spirit to discern and avoid him. And that, and that is a knowledge and understanding. You have to know what you have to know it for real, not just a little feeling. And that's what Dr. Kinley was thinking about when uh, was Acts 17 and 30. It said at the times this ignorance, Yahweh winked at. That was before he poured out the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It says, but now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. That means to change. For he hath appointed a day in which he'll judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. See how he's going to judge and give him proof that he has raised him from the dead. And so he said, well, how can he judge the world in righteousness, mm -hmm. seeing that nobody can agree? They got all these religions and different beliefs. And that's then. He, and when he got this vision and revelation, that was his answer. That's how Yahweh is going to judge the world in righteousness is through this divine vision revelation or through the Holy Spirit. And then you had in the scripture lesson 14 and 10, it says, don't you know that all of us will appear before the mercy, I mean, before the judgment seat of the Messiah? See, so you're being judged in this age, whether you believe it or not, you understand? Uh, so, and then it, it, the same thing is in 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. It says the same thing there too. Uh, so there's a lot of things involved with this. You know that, uh, and then the last verse of 14 there, mm -hmm. 1423 mm -hmm. says, whatever is not of, uh, read, yeah. read that, 1423. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So he's saying whatever is not of faith is sin. Well, what that is, is whatever's not of Yahshua, <laughs> that's, that, that's, the, that's the sin. You understand? In other words, uh, Yahshua is without sin. So if he's in you, you're cleansed. Uh, I mean, for real, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And because uh, everybody says they have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit is a knowledge and understanding and, and, and those attributes being uh well like was read earlier he's the teacher right. and we were all wrong we all had to be corrected mm -hmm. and that and he's the one that corrected us uh and that's his love towards us that when we're wrong he he corrects us mm -hmm. and, and uh and and there's more to it uh but uh, i think we do have it's about the first hour done so we should probably get uh, that. That was a great, it's a great transcript that contending for the faith that people mm -hmm. want to do that. I don't know. But, Can I just yeah. ask a question, please, of Dr. Lewis? Sure. Which one? Uh, uh, doctor, uh, I heard you, Lenore. <laughs> I mean, Dr. Frank Lewis, he was just speaking, right? Uh, um, uh, uh, I appreciate what you said about the judgment there. Uh, is that why the founder said that this teaching is the judgment of the world? Yeah, that's, right. that's right. Uh, matter of fact, uh, if you look at the dispensation ages chart, 
you will see um, uh, Hebrews 9.26. And, and that's right. You see right there at the cross? You see how it says Hebrews 9.26 at the end of the age? You ought to read that probably. Because this is the concept that some people have. You know how people say, you can't judge me. God's going to judge me uh, at the end. I, I, I'm going to die and then go to the judgment. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. Well, Hebrews 9.26, uh, you need the, well, it's on that chart there. But go ahead, read it. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the age, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now he says, once in the end of the world. See, that, that's King James, the other guy. He likes to substitute uh, age and world. But it was at the end of the post Luvian age. Mm -hmm. But there's some times where he used, changes it and it's not good. I'll say it that way. So it says, once in the end of the world. So when Yahshua Messiah is on, fulfilling and dying on the cross, he brought an end to the world or end of that dispensation and age. And, and uh, he made a change. And so uh, he appeared. He, that's why he came, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Then it says, and. So you got to keep reading. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So it was appointed that Yahshua Messiah had to die. Right. He's the man. <laughs> and men are going to die too. But after this, the judgment. We'll see, after he died, buried, resurrected, ascended, and poured out the Holy Spirit, that's when man is now going to be judged. Whether they accept Yahshua the Messiah and the things that he did and, 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 and the Holy Spirit is what's going to cause you to be able to judge something righteously. Because didn't it say he'll judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained? Mm -hmm. And it says the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And when she was reading a transcript in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and it, and it says he's no respect for persons, too, every time you run judgment down through the law and the prophets. But uh, that, that sixth chapter says, dare any of you to go against the, the, the judge of the court of the unjust judge? Don't you know we're going to judge angels? Right. What do you, how can you judge an angel? That's right. Well, what it is, is we can judge those demons mm -hmm. <laughs> that are in bodies that are lying to people. Right. You understand? Yes. In other words, they like he's doing in the transcript, we're going to earnestly contend because they're out there saying Jesus said to be water baptized. Jesus said to do this. And we know that he fulfilled it. So if you can't bring that over across the cross now. And so that's how we're judging those false doctrines that's in people. Uh, like we was talking about uh, in Isaiah that they're greedy dogs and they're all ignorant and they can't bark and they can't warn people. Uh -huh. You understand? He was, he, he's not, we're not against people. We're against the false doctrine. And so we're able to de discern and avoid being deceived by those things because the Holy Spirit showed us, uh, has taught us these things. So ever since he poured out the Holy Spirit, just like was read about the judgment, when you take the garments of the high priest, you can walk it on down. And, 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 and that, that putting on the breastplate is the same is, uh, of judgment is the same uh, dispensation is when he poured out the Holy Spirit. So yeah, when he poured out the Holy Spirit, the teaching, in, in this age, this is the judgment of the world because it's the same teaching the brethren got on the day of Pentecost. It's the same Holy Spirit teaching down at the end of this age. And that's why it's the judgment of the world. Yeah, you're being judged whether you accept the, the true gospel of the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah and that uh, there's only salvation in Yahshua the Messiah. He's the Holy Spirit. See, did that help out some? I don't know. Oh, yes. At, yeah, this, this, point, at this point, Brother uh, Lewis, is, is uh, my understanding that it 
it's not so much the world because he already knows who's out there. He's working now. The Spirit, Holy Spirit, is working now within. Excuse me, the organization of people like us that said <coughs> that says we are artists. He's in here cleaning up this patch of, of, of stuff. His people or the ones that he's calling his people, there's an in, uh, in fluctuation of people in this organization you know, where, the, where we're running righteousness and iniquity together. And we need to be able to discern right in here because this is the area more or less in, in my, I don't know what uh, thoughts or what I have read and observed that he's cleaning up his house. This is his house, this teaching is his house. So we have to get things right in here and stop gibbering so much about what's going on in the world because we don't even have that much contact with the world except that they tune in here. But in, in this body, this is the body that's being cleansed up. This is the one that uh, he's paying the, the most attention to. Yeah, we, well, we all know. We've all been wrong and come from the world. And we are trying to help any soul that we can contact. You understand? We're not against people. Again, we're against the false doctrine. Talk to them. And we're here. If our souls have been helped, we want to try to help another soul. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it's about. Because I tell you what, I was at an Ohio State board meeting this weekend. And those guys, were they were out there saying, uh, uh, we don't do public relations. It's an internal thing. You need to have, it's your relationship with God. And I couldn't believe my ears. That girl's been around probably 40 years and said it's a, her relationship with God. Yeah. I mean, it don't make no sense to be saying <laughs> God now. But that, but that, but so, you know, there, and, and, there, and, and it's just a mess what mm -hmm. people, They've been sitting under this school for a long time and, 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 and want to say, uh, you know, all kinds of things about you've got to know that you're God in a body and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, it's just a, it's not, it's really, it's it, so, and as we, as we told them, we're not against people, but we are against the false doctrine. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you, and you read like, well, just listen to what Dr. Kinley's going to say in the transcript. I mean, he's over there tearing it up, the false doctrine. And he talks about being earnestly contending for the faith. And i tell you what, people are on different levels. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something to learn. I mean, we, we, all, have, we all have so much more to learn. Yahweh yeah. has so, so much more to show us. Hallelujah. You understand? So yes. We, we need to wait on some things, too. You understand? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, and and so um, that we ain't even got close to running judgment, really. You're right. The Bible just now. You're but right. The thing is, we, we, we do like to use the first hour for that, uh, for to go over the scripture lesson a little bit and then um, then try to get into the transcript. Because I tell you what, those things are just as precious today as they was back there when he was preaching. It. You know, what hallelujah. I'm hallelujah. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yes. Know? And so those things that he's teaching here, you're going to see him, uh, well, just like she's got on the board there. Uh, now you're right back where you started, the author and <laughs> finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. And that's the one we want to contend for. It's not yes. necessary that you should earnestly contend. Uh, contend with the Roman Catholics. Contend with the Baptists. Contend with everybody. <laughs> You see that? <laughs> That's what the Holy Spirit's saying through him. And that man yes. knew that knew the man know what he saw, and he knew how to teach it. Yes, yes. And so okay. that's why these transcripts are so valuable. I just have one thought. Romans, what we just read for the scripture reading, and they're talking about herbs and meat. Is he discussing that because? the Jews and the Gentiles were coming together and so they would be judging each other about yeah. what they were eating as, as, as concerning the law? Well, he was saying a few things if you, if you looked into it, but he was saying that uh, some people regard a day 
and somebody doesn't regard the day mm -hmm. and right. they're saying, well, I'm doing it. Uh, and then also the way they ate and what they did eat. Right. There's a change. Uh, They're going from being um, physically under the law. There's oh, I was surprised that they're still gathering together when there's a Passover. Hey, that's over. No, they're still gathering together after Yahshua goes through death, burial, resurrection. And so is that the problem that the Jews and the Gentiles are coming together and they some are like strictly following the laws and someone's like, well, why are we doing this? That's my question. You can say yes or no. Yeah, he was just talking. He was talking and he used the word judge in those things, too. Uh, uh, and, and some things, you know, I mean, does, do, you know, people even judge people on what they eat. And like Dr. Kinley said, I can eat whatever I want to. If it don't hurt me, it ain't surely ain't going to hurt you. Right. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> it, 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 and, and they did have dietary laws under the law, under the thing. Right. You understand? Right. So if somebody right. wanted to stay that way, even though they believe Yashim Messiah, do I have to judge them because of what they want to eat and what they want to uh, worship? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That, that's kind of how he was doing it, the way I, I was, we were reading it earlier there. Okay, that's just what uh, I want to do. And, and like I say, there, sometimes there's somebody hasn't come to the understanding yet on certain things. And so that's why we continue uh, preaching and teaching the true gospel. You understand? So that we can all be brought up to, to the one uh, faith and one knowledge and understanding. You see that? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's different gifts too. You understand? Yes. Uh, and so we just appreciate each other. You know, we're, we're helpers one of another. And, yes. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it, but I, I think it'd be nice to get back into the transcript if we can. What, what is the transcript, may I ask? I, um, I've been Con having to do Contend for the faith. Contend for the faith. Con yes. Contend for the faith. Okay, yes. thank you. See if uh, I Thank you. Yeah. It's... Uh, I don't know if somebody's got it right. Yeah, Contend for the Faith by Henry C. Kinley in Springfield, Ohio, 62374. Right. 62374, Contend for the Faith. <coughs> Dr. Me. Kinley in Springfield. He would usually go from Los Angeles uh, back to Springfield in the summertime. And so. And now and now, now you're right back where you started, the author and finisher of our faith. Now that's the one we want to contend for. It's necessary that you should earnestly contend. <coughs> contend with the Roman Catholics. Contend with the Baptists. Contend with everybody. You understand what I'm talking about now? Yes, sir. <coughs> I'll fight you in a minute. Anybody who was not preaching Yahshua the Messiah, not Jesus Christ, not the Lord, and the Lord is not a name. God is not a name. And I will fight and say, listen, don't you run in here. Now, if you think <coughs> that I'll tap my little head, I'll tip my little head and go up here and I'll show him something. We'll beat the he hell out of you. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Allen, I'll be happy to read in your place. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> okay. But read it with enthusiasm because that's the way he said it. <laughs> okay, Doc. Where shall we begin again? Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, I'm going to start here. Contend with Baptists, contend with everybody. You understand what I'm talking about now? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'll fight in a minute anybody who is not preaching Yahshua the Messiah not Jesus Christ, not the Lord. And Lord is not a name. God is not a name. And I will fight and say, listen, don't you run in here. Now, if you think, now I'll tip my little head and I'll go up here and I'll show him something. We'll beat the hell out of you, student body class. <laughs> Dr. Billy Carroll had in his brief, briefcase a book this one right here, the faith of leaders, it's in it's imprim 
primer. It's imprimatur. Imprimatur. I'm sorry. Thank you, Doc. It's imprimatur. Is that right? Yes, sir. It's imprimatur by the Roman Catholics, and it is written by Reverend John A. O'Brien, Ph.D., Professor of Religious Dogma and Logic, or he was a philosopher in the Roman Catholic Church of Notre Dame. I want to let you know, I beat that man into humble submission in Santa Monica, and he went on back <clears throat> to the back end of the place, when in, went in the laboratory. I preached right on down the aisle. And when he opened the laboratory door said, you get up and get out of here. Come on, right in here. Come, come on back in here. Come on back up here and stand your ground. Now, Sister Mary was right there. Am I lying, Sister Mary? No. Uh, That's right. You, you was here. Now he wasn't, he, now he wasn't come back up in the front no more. Now he had told Jim Parker and Evelyn Yates that he used to be associated with the Roman Catholic Church, but he wasn't anymore. Then we saw him on the TV around a, a round table conference and they introduced him with his titles that you got here as belonging to the Roman Catholic Church. And they had the Methodists and the Baptists and Jews at the table in a round table conference. And they were talking. Now, what's the use of a man standing up calling himself a priest and first telling a lie that he didn't belong to the church no more? And then second, here he is down here on TV and up in front of the public and everybody could see that he's a liar after standing up and saying that he didn't belong to any to it anymore. You follow? Well, listen, this thing that I belong to, I'm not ashamed of it. And I'm not going to get out and will fight. I'm not ashamed. And if you be ashamed of what we're talking about, then Yahshua, the Messiah, will be ashamed of you. Now, read on. And it's necessary that he should write and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered. Now, I want to show you that. When Moses, pardon me, when Moses took, was took up here in the mountain, he saw the creation. And he saw the creator. And this man you call Joshua was Joshua incarnated or Yahweh incarnate, incarnated in a physical body, went right along with Moses, and he showed him the creation of everything, angels and all, which would be. See, inside the sanctuary, he saw angels and everything. Now, that faith, that faith was delivered to the sons back here. And now you have in Hebrews, I want you to realize that now. Because people just read around in the Bible and they don't realize you was reading in Hebrew. That's an epistle that was to the Jews. To them, the faith was delivered. They're the ones and Moses was a Hebrew. And now Jude is saying it's necessary for him to write and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the sons. You should. Somebody say, well, now, I don't know about that. But now, yes, you should. Somebody say, well, I don't believe in talking about other churches. Well, you should. Somebody say, well, that, what faith are you? Now, how many faiths are there? One. One. He said, the faith, not the faith. It's necessary since it was delivered unto the Jew. It's necessary for me to write Jude, write this epistle to the Hebrew and earnestly tell them that they should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto them. Something has happened. Uh, Dr. Uh, Alan, read on. My, I have to turn my phone off.
Okay, something has happened. Read on. For there are certain men. For there are certain men. Crept in unawares. Hold it, hold it. Now you want to know where all these churches come from? They are those satanic spirits that you read about in the 12th chapter of Revelations. In your scripture lesson, cast out of heaven, incorporated in physical bodies. And if you notice, <clears throat> Satan was back there in the Garden of Eden. Said there were men of old crept in while you wasn't watching. And then the next thing you know, come up through the deacon board. They come up through the laity, come up to a priest. And the next thing you know, he's a pope or some or some other potentate crept in while you wasn't watching unaware then what did he do who were before uh old ordained now he was before <laughs> of old ordained <clears throat> see this mess that see this mess you're talking about that there was ordained <clears throat> it would pay you to go look around a little bit way back yonder who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. All right, read on. I'm back, who, Dr. Allen. Okay. Who were, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. That's right. Ungodly men. Ungodly men. Turning the grace of our Elohim. Now, just a minute. Turning the grace. I want you to understand now what we're talking about. We're not just reading to be reading. Turning the grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. It is an unmerited or an unearned gift, a free gift. That's not by works of righteousness that the Jews had back there and that the Roman Catholics are, car are carrying about, carrying out baptism and all those carnal ordinances that were given to the Jews and that now we're in the dispensation of grace where Yahweh just now we're we and we're in the dispiration of in dispensation of grace where Yahweh just simply gave you his spirit you didn't merit it you didn't earn it it's grace and now what they're doing is turning the grace into a bunch of ignorance and foolishness, dragging these carnal ordinances on back in here. And Yahshua will fulfill them and move them out of the way. They're saying that he instituted Christian water baptism. They're saying that he instituted. That's babbling. Can't you see? Turning the grace of our Elohim. Now, what catches Roman Catholics and Judaism and Protestants? They're turning the grace, not two works of it either, or three works into lasciviousness or foolishness. Now, did you know that the book, not, now did you know that the book said they were gone, were going to do that? Yahweh said they are going to do that. You want to read it? Now then, we come back to where we were Habakkuk, the first chapter. Now this is what's happened. And this is where we're having all our battles and all of our fights. And Yahweh for, forewarned you and told you about it, about it, told you about it to begin with the first chapter of Habakkuk. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, oh Yahweh, how long shall I cry? Now listen, Habakkuk said, oh Yahweh, how long shall I cry? I've been crying 43 years. Habakkuk said, how long shall I cry? Read on. And thou will not hear. And thou will not hear. Even cry out unto thee. See the prophecy? Would Yahweh had had purpose, had to be fulfilled. You can't stop it. You're just going to have Roman Catholicism anyhow. They're going to be around when he's revealed from heaven. And listen, you're talking about them arguing with you. They're going to start an argument with him. If you want that read, 
I'll read it for you. They're going to start an argument with him about it. That's Matthew 7, 22. All right. How long shall I cry? He will cry unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Uh-huh. Why does why does thou show me iniquity? Uh-huh. And cause me to behold grievance. Uh-huh. Stop spoiling and violence are before me. I'm sorry, for spoiling and violence are before me. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and there are that raised up strife and contention all right read therefore the law is slacked the law is slacked and judgment does not go forth and judgment does not go forth for the wicked does compress about the righteous that's right therefore wrong judgment proceeded uh-huh behold ye among the heathens and regard Listen now, you look. Behold means to look. Look among the heathens. Now they'd been dispersed among the heathens and Yahweh gonna gather them back into their own land. And he's saying, now behold ye, look among the heathens. And regard. And regard. And wonder is marvel. And wonder marvelous, marvelously. For I will work a work. Whoa, 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 hold it, hold it. Now you behold, you look, and then you wonder marvelously. Marvel at the many different religions calling themselves, worshiping Yahweh, worshiping him through their idolatry. You look and you wonder marvelously. All right, this is the prophet prophesying before the Messiah come through the loins of a woman. All right, read. Well, I will work a work in your day. Now listen here, listen here. You listen now. He said he was gonna do the work, not you. He <laughs> said, I'll work a work in your day, telling the Jew, what about it? Which ye will not believe. See, he told them to begin with that when Yahshua the Messiah come along <laughs> preaching the gospel, they wasn't going to believe it. He told them up front that they wasn't going to believe it. Finish that. You will not believe though it be told to you. Though, though it be told to you. See, you won't believe it. Though it be told to you. All right. But lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. That bitter. That's enough. That's enough right there. Now go to the second chapter of Habakkuk. I will stand up on my watch. Now Habakkuk says, I will stand up on my watch. Do you remember his watchmen? They were blind. And now he's going to stand up on his watch to see what Yahweh's going to say to him. And what he would tell the people. All right, read. And set me up on the tower. And set me up on the tower. And we'll watch to see what he will say. And I'm going to watch to see what he's going to say to me. And you see, that's what I've been doing. I was watching to see what he's going to say to me. I didn't say, see what the people was going to say mm -hmm. or see what my pastor was going to say. All right. And what I shall answer. And what must I say when he starts talking to me? What must I say? Listen, I've had some experience with that and I'd hate to get a loose here this morning with that. If I did, then you wouldn't get out of here until this afternoon. <laughs> All right, read. When I am approved. When I'm a, when I'm reproved. And Yahweh answers me and said. And now Yahweh answered him, and this is what he said. Write the vision. Now wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. Yahweh said, write the vision, and then what else? And make it plain. 
and make it clear and plain so that any idiot can understand it. And then when he does that, then what? Read. Upon tables that he may. Upon tables that he may. That he may run that. Oh, sorry. That he may run that. Read it. So that he can cut out. <laughs> Don't stay around there. No more. Cut on out. Cut out aware. Out of Babylon, out of Catholicism, out of Judaism, out of Judaism, and all of them kind of things, so he can be able to read it and run. Now, folks, that brings me around to say this to you. I'm trying my best to teach. I'm not trying to do what you call preach. Of course, true teaching is preaching. Now, look, that is what we have done. We have wrote the vision down and we have made it clear, crystal clear, so that you read and cut out, so that you can read and get going. You follow what I mean? That's not my work and ain't nobody able to fix it. We've been preaching this, we've been preaching this teaching 43 years. And listen, we had the very smartest of men out of the universities, out of the colleges, the scientists, the professors, the doctors, and everybody else. We've had them. That is, we've challenged the whole entire world and ain't nobody been able to put this one down. Now, about, now how about that? We got some out there, every church you can think of, Roman Catholics, the Baptists, the Methodists, Jehovah's Witness, Buddhism, a Judaism and the Muslims, we've got them. I mean, preachers preaching the gospel and they're preaching it by this vision and it is defended by the Bible. It's line upon line. It's precept upon precept. This is that which was once delivered unto the Son and that you should earnestly contend but out here among all these different sects and creeds and denominations and so forth and so on. Now, listen, there isn't a one of them. Listen to what I'm going to say. There isn't a one of them that's able to prove to you how the Godhead is put together. He don't know one earthly thing about it. And Roman Catholics have continued their Trinitarian concept. Deuteronomy 6 and 8. I didn't say this. Oh. I, I did not say this. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is Yahweh a unity. Now listen, I'm going to repeat it again. Repeat it. Oh, I'm sorry. Hear, O Israel. Now just a minute. Now, this is Yahweh talking to Israel, and this is what he is saying. He is saying, hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, is Yahweh a trinity? Unity. Oh, is that a, is that a unity? See, he's a unity. Now, listen, you've gone, you've got sense enough to know. You don't even need no brains. You know good and well that all your body is united by joints and all like a, all, and all like that. And it's built up into a body. It's a unity and works in harmony and unity, not three distinctive individual personalities. Now, how would you prove that? All right. This is him. I'm going to get the big one. I'll get this one. This ends off here. It's the same as here. Using the tabernacle off of the physical body chart. This is the most holy place. That's one. This is the holy place. That's two. This is the court roundabout. That's three. And it's all united into one tabernacle and one temple. Now listen, this is Yahweh Elohim transformed 
or changed into the tabernacle that Moses saw back here in the mountain, in the wilderness. And it is a unity that's one, most holy place. Holy place, two, outer court, three. That's a unity. That's only one tabernacle, and this is only one body, and your body is the temple or tabernacle. You see what I'm talking about? Now, here is what some people think. They think the Father is setting up there in the sky, the Son, Jesus, that was just his chief representative walking around here on the earth, and then the Holy Spirit, they didn't know. They didn't know about that, didn't have no idea of that. So then they just said he was God's chief representative talking about Jesus. I beg your pardon. Your book says, without controversy. Write the vision. Without controversy. The book say, without controversy. Now, that means without any discussion, without any debate, or without any argument, great is the mystery of Yahweh. Listen, Yahweh was manifested in. Better read it. First Timothy. I think it is verse 16. So you can't go away and say, I hope Gil. Now listen up. The time is about expired. And beyond controversy. And B. How's that? Repeat quick. And beyond controversy, deep is the mystery of holiness. He who was manifested in human form had his claim attested by the Spirit was seen of angels. That Bible. What Bible is he reading out of? What Bible is he reading out of? You're going to have to unmute because I was trying to get rid of the noise. Yes, I just yeah. unmuted, Doc. Um, and, it says, what Bible was he reading out of? I'm sorry, I'm lost. Okay. There's a lot of noise going on, and I'm wondering if you all are hearing it. Yes, we are. Okay, so could somebody else take over reading my part so that's not to disturb? Okay, I'll be you. I'll be you. Read, this, this read it out of the King James Bible. And okay. without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Yahweh was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels. See the oh. way that that read you could get confused in it. Preached unto the Gentiles. Now, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, or it should be great is the mystery of Yahweh. Yahweh was manifested in the flesh. Yahweh was manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Seen, listen now, seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentile. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. And received back up into glory where he came from. Now that's, a, now that's about in Yahweh. Now I want you to see what I'm talking about. See, while they say it, it's a trinity, meaning just like these three setting here, you're the Father, you're the Son, and you the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> three distinctive individual personalities. It's not that way. It's a unity. Even the Father is in this body. Yahweh was manifested in Yahshua, in that one body. He said, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me either believe on me for my very work sake. Somebody said, well, I don't believe it. Come on, let's go to the cemetery. Where'd you lay him at? Lazarus I'm talking about. See, and he had to be careful too about that. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Somebody say, well, that sure was a great mystery. That sure was a great one. That man been dead four days. Well, what about them being dead for 4,000 years? that he told you about over there in Matthew 27, 52. He said he was the resurrection and the life. 
he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Do you believe that? Nah. How can I believe this? You follow? See, it takes it takes something. But these preachers out there, out here, they're bad. <clears throat> you want to read Dr. Killy for me, please? And I'll do the yeah. other one. Okay. okay. Now Jude said it's necessary that he should write to the Jews back up there because the gospel was given to them first and then 10 years later to the Gentiles. And it's necessary for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sons of Yahweh. Now listen, for there are certain men who are ordained of old that crept in unaware and turned the grace of our Elohim into lasciviousness. Now folks, I should say this to you. And now anybody in this building, anybody in this building, I want you to read to me now. Or if you think it's in there somewhere and you can't find it, we'll find it for you. Whatever you think, wherever it's, wherever it's in. Now, this is what I want you to read. I want you to read to me out of your Bible. I don't care which one you got. King James or whatever it is, I want you to read to me where Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. Now you pay attention to what I'm saying because this is what I'm talking about. Yahweh Elohim Yahshua, the Lord God, Jesus Christ, Adonai, <laughs> Jehovah or Baal or Allah. <laughs> now, how about that one? Everyone. Anywhere in the Bible, I don't care where you read it, where he ever said anything in the history of the world about a Gentile being baptized in physical <clears throat> water. I want that read. I never did read it. Now, now that scope is broad enough for you to read it somewhere where one of them said for you to get baptized in physical water. I wanted read where he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth his death and suffering till he comes. In other words, I want you to show me and read to me where the Gentiles ever ate the Lord's Supper. I want you to read to me where he ever said anything to the Gentiles about keeping the Sabbath day. I want you to read to me where he ever said anything in the history of the world in your Bible about the Gentiles getting their feet washed. I want it read out of the Bible. Now, if you can't read it now, then forget it. Now, I wouldn't have never said that if I hadn't known it wasn't in there. Then how is it that you can go over there to these other churches and read out of the Bible and then you get up over here and you can't read nothing. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? See, it's not. It's not even in the almanac to say nothing about the Bible. I'll tell you what the difference is. I know my time is expired. The Gentiles, they stood by faith. That truth which was made to Abraham. In Abraham's faith in what Yahweh had said to him was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now, we are earnestly contending for that same faith. And that faith is accounted unto us for righteousness. And listen, it is a faith without works. Now, you got yourself something to think about for the rest of the day, at least, if not the rest of your life. And just remember, every one of these hypocrites that stands around talking about this, Yahweh, I read to you where Yahweh said they wasn't going to believe the truth, no how. The Pharisees and the scribes, they challenged him. And he already done said they wasn't going to believe it, and which they didn't. And they wanted to know by what authority he did this, that, and that the other. This, that, and the other. And he didn't give you 
no authority to go out and to do something about it. He didn't need none. They just didn't know who he was. And they don't really know the real preacher in the world today. The one that's sent from Yahweh. They telling you out there in water baptism and all like that. Well, you ain't you ain't read where he ever said anything to you about getting baptized. And listen here, there ain't nobody in the building and nobody on earth that was that wasn't Has that been. wasn't been baptized in water. There isn't anybody here on earth. Nor let me show you that. I know the net, I know the time is gone right here. See, you were surrounded in a bag of water in your mother's womb, inundated, inundated, just like the earth was inundated back there in the creation. And then Yahshua, the Messiah, who is the savior of the world, when he was baptized of John out here, that's his whole entire body that was baptized. Well, that's what the assembly is, the body of Yahshua, the Messiah. So when he baptized him in the Jordan River, that got the Gentiles. Pardon me. When he was circumcised eight days after he was born, see, that got you. Now the world don't understand these things. And these hypocrite preachers out here just lying. You see what I'm talking about? And here's another thing. I ought to show, I ought to say this by all means. That's the reason there's so much running backward and forward and you trying to live what they say. Don't chew no tobacco. Don't smoke no cigarettes. Don't take no drink. They say they got a dietary regimen set up for you and don't do this and don't do that and don't do the other. And when you get through with, with it, there's nobody else can do. Can't teach nothing else to you. And here you come with a condemned conscience said, well, I tried. You can't do what they say do. They ain't doing it their own selves, lying just like a dog. He's sneaking around the same place and saying, give me a little nip. And his conscience is seared with a hot iron and standing up there lying to you like a dog. And telling you, Jesus said, as long as we eat this bread and drink, and you wasn't even invited to the party. That's right. There wasn't no Gentiles at that party. He ate it with his disciples in the upper room. That happened in another world, another age. That done sneaked off, fell asleep, and way back yonder in the Antilubian, and we and he don't know what he's talking about. Now, that's what you got here in the world today. And that's what you've got to overcome. Hope you've got something out of what I had to say. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, hey. Wow, he was on fire. <clears throat> what are you going to say after that? <laughs> You know, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, brethren. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Doc, I think I've even got a call. <laughs> I know. That was absolutely wonderful. Wow. Wow. Nothing else could be said. What else? Mm. Is the moderator there? Is it time? We got, uh, it's 12 yeah, uh, seven minutes. Oh, thank you, Dr. McCain. Yeah, I also saw that it said, um, <clears throat> some places it says do's and don'ts contend for the faith because in the end he's talking about the do's and don'ts but it, it really is a beautiful um transcript and i like the way he spoke so clearly you know distinctly you, you couldn't misplace what he was saying
And we see that uh, that dated uh, June 23rd, 1974, recorded in Springfield, Ohio. This lecture confirms that the transcript uh, must have a profound knowledge has been mislabeled as taking place in Los Angeles, California. Dr. Kinley was in Springfield during this time and it was a couple weeks after the healing of Dr. Richard Davis. Wow. Uh, yeah, they had, matter of fact, they had the Ohio State uh, Convention in July. And that healing of Richard Davis, that is one of the greatest, well, testimonies I've heard. You know, uh, that guy was uh, driving his motorcycle and, uh, and uh, he's going about 40 some miles per hour in this uh, old station wagon with the luggage rack. Uh, I mean, when he hit that, he went right over and, uh, and it uh, broke his jaw, <laughs> uh, broke his rib, uh, broke his pubic arch and uh, even severed his uh, private member there. And he was laying in the ditch and the policeman said, wow, I, uh, there's so much blood come out of that man. And uh, Dr. Kinley was even actually somewhere where he told the guys he was fishing. And at that time he said, hey, uh, we can't, we got to go back to Springfield there. <clears throat> and when uh, his, when his sister said, oh, uh, uh, I gotta tell you what happened. He said, I already know what happened. <laughs> and, uh, and he didn't go to see him for a few days. And then after the Sunday class, uh, that's when he took Dr. Bob Buffington and Dr. Oliver Gill there to the hospital. <clears throat> and uh, just kind of the sense of humor, they're in the elevator and, and uh, there was a, a tall uh, Catholic priest there that told him where the uh, intensive care unit was. And uh, after the guy walked out, out Dr. Kelly said, now that was a high priest. <laughs> and when he goes into the intensive care unit, he said, oh, we wanna see Richard Davis. And she said, well, you can't talk to him. He's in a coma there. And, uh, and uh, and they said only family could go. He said, "Well, that's where we are, family." And he had you know, two black men, the white guy, and Richard Davis was a white guy. But uh, they were also, you know, of course, ministers there, so they were able to go in there. And when Doctor Kinley's over him, uh, well, Doctor Gill said he saw him laying there, and 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 he it wasn't making no movement. How he was laying there was kind of strange he thought he was real still and when dr kinley uh uh, uh was was over him uh he started moving and uh <clears throat> and and then he opened up his eyes now richard davis he say you know uh he said i really can't tell you what happened i was in a place that uh uh you can't he can't express it because it was in the spirit and you really can't do words to show how, you know, you could say love and light and different colors he saw. Uh, he, he said, you really can't explain it. He just knew it was just uh, the greatest experience he ever had. Uh, never had nothing like that in the flesh. And then he feels himself being pulled from that. And that was when Dr. Kinley was uh, over him there. And then he feels himself going back into the body. And then he felt the coldness and the, uh, you know, the just felt the whole different situation. He opens eyes and there's Dr. Kinley there. And he's speaking to him and, and uh, the nurses and them were shocked. Uh, and uh, they told him, well, you, do you know these guys? And he named them and so on. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and not only, and, and, and uh, well, uh, he, not only was he brought back into the body and he said, I don't know. He said, there must be something special about him because how did he know where I was at to get me? 
<laughs> and uh, and uh, not only did he get healed, did he come back into the body, but he was healed from all those things. And the doctor said it was like a super glue because he was drinking water, a bunch of water one day, and he just went in and used the restroom when he wasn't supposed to walk for months. And he was up there at the Ohio State Convention in July giving a testimony about it. Uh, uh, and then he did tell Dr. Kinley, he said, whenever you would want, I want to go back there uh, uh, where you took me from. And Dr. Kinley said, that ain't it. It's better than that. Uh, it's a transition from the body into the spirit. But um, <laughs> so there isn't nothing worth losing your soul over and to have eternal bliss and happiness I mean, I can't really, we're just using a few minutes to talk about it, but it is a great testimony. And it's also to show that, you know, there's life after this. And uh, that's really what we are, spirit creatures. And uh, we're having an experience within ourselves that is just a beautiful thing. And we want that for others. And, uh, and, and, and we got to take off this physical body because uh, Yahweh has so much more to reveal to us. So we're on our journey in this age to learn about him and be a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, you're going to receive, if you re receive that Holy Spirit, you're going to receive an immortal go a body to go along with it and be in the next age, him learning about him throughout eternity. So it's worth coming down here. and. Uh, uh, being caught up. Uh, well, praise Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been a great class today. We thank everyone that came to study with us. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 midnight to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England, with a Sunday class with our Jamaican brethren at 7 p.m. May we all stand in our hearts and mind for the doxologies taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.